Markets rallying broadly the day after the Fed pause. All sectors finishing in the green today. And joining us now, longtime market bull Tom Lee, Fundstrat Global Advisors co-founder, and Mona Mahajan, Edward Jones, senior investment strategist. Guys, welcome. Tom, hey. People like to call you a perma bull. I made my joke about them replacing the Wall Street bull statue with a Tom Lee statue. But I asked <laughs> the overtime team for receipts. Uh, February 22nd, you said investors should expect payback. We had one of the best Januaries. Uh, March 3rd, you said you see a strong rally in the next two months as softer inflation data hits. Then on the 7th of March, you said inflation could be easing much faster than expected. Fang is set to grow. You weren't just directionally right. You were pretty specifically right. So, all right, I'll give you credit where credit's due. What do you say now? What's coming next? Uh, John, I, I think that uh, investors should still view this year as, as full of opportunities. I, I think there is a lot of uh, pessimism that exists and people feeling they missed the rally. Uh, but what I think's going to happen in the next, uh, for the rest of the year, is that we're going to see a, a, a real expansion of market breadth. And I, I think part of it comes from the Fed's message yesterday. I know that there's two hikes sort of baked into the dots and even in, in their views, but I think that the Fed is essentially green lighting the ability for markets to go higher because with with the with the Fed sort of saying that they have some breathing room, I think it allows CEOs to sort of start to move forward. You know, earnings growth estimates are actually creeping up, and even Q2 X energy earnings growth looks like it's going to turn positive. Uh, to me, that's a green light for cyclicals to rally. So I think okay. this is like small caps, industrials, et cetera. Now, Mona, that doesn't mean that you should sit on your hands fixed income wise either. If we do get those. Just two hikes, probably quarter point over a series of months. That means we're near the end of that cycle. And so longer duration bonds, you say, might make sense to lock that in here. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we are with Tom. We see opportunities in equities and bond markets forming. In fact, the Fed told us yesterday, yes, they could have one to two more hikes left. But 2024, they're seeing 100 basis points of cuts. So when you look out six to 12 months, which markets do, we're seeing a better inflationary environment. We're seeing a better yield environment overall, and potentially a better earnings backdrop. Earnings are expected to grow double digits in 2024. Now, to your point on bonds, um, think about it. Right now, we could be at the peak of Treasury bond yields. Treasury bond yields historically have peaked one to two months ahead of Fed funds rate. If you're at a peak in Treasury bond yields, that means longer duration makes a lot more sense. You're locking in better yields, better price appreciation potentially if yields peak and roll over over time. So good opportunities in both sides of the market, we but think. Mona, how much of this does hinge on this soft landing narrative? And then given the fact that we have seen valuations expand the way we have it in recent trading sessions, I mean, the S&P 44.25, we're looking at, what, 19 times forward earnings, maybe a little higher than that right now. I mean, are we long in the tooth? Yeah, you know, it's a great point. And look, we don't think a soft landing necessarily has to happen for this market to expand. In fact, if you look at what the Fed told us yesterday, a 1% GDP growth, if you think about that, that implies a second half that is softening, potentially negative slightly. But I think the market is braced for now a mild recessionary environment or at least a slowdown to below potential growth for the second half of the year. So we think markets are priced for that. They can't ignore it completely. We've had a great rally. Uh, historically, one to two corrections are the norm in any given year. So we wouldn't expect um, that not to happen this year. And we would actually, you know, think it's a little healthy to get a little bit of consolidation after a really nice run. But that's your opportunity to position then for better returns ahead. Tom, what would you be staying away from right now? Uh, well, I think some of the crowded trades are things like cash. And, uh, and I just heard on the earlier show that money market funds are starting to see the first departures of cash and presumably into risk assets. But also, that I think that means defensive sectors in the S&P. You know, it's, it hasn't been a winning strategy to be defensive this year, whether it's utilities or REITs or staples. These have, uh, well, they've beaten cash, but they've underperformed the market pretty dramatically. So I think people need to be a little more risk on.